You got one. You went to a dealership in 2022 and bought a new truck. Why? 2022 Ford Maverick 2.0 Turbo All-Wheel Drive. What did you do to get this truck? Did you walk? Did you just walk backward into Mayor Meyer Ford, holding your ass cheeks as wide as your skin would stretch? Please, please, I need it now. Give it to me, someone. I need that synthetic automatic auger dildo disaster. And the salesperson holds up something made with ebony ingots, Daedra hearts, and attached to a two-stroke engine. The salesperson narrows their eyes, raises their nose, and speaks softly, barely audible, over the pagan chanting coming from the back office. And they say, Maybe. Why should I? There are no deals now and not for the foreseeable future. So you can't brag about how you talked them down. So the move, oddly now, to impress people, is to brag about how much you got turned out. You got a new car? How much did you pay over sticker? Oh, I paid 5000 over sticker to get this. Well, I paid 10000 over sticker. And, and I'm not immune from this either. How much did I pay for this new camera car? $16,000. And weirdly, I feel proud to say that. So figure it out. As for the owner of this Maverick, uh, he's leasing this, so whatever. And I, I didn't ask what he's paying. The 2022 Ford Maverick 2.0 turbo engine is a detuned version of... I don't care. Everything Fomoco makes now. Half, half the stuff on the lot is a 2-liter turbo. Don't care. What I do care about is that this is, this is a turbocharged engine made to run on 87 octane. A turbocharged engine made to run on cheap gas. Well done. I, I, I respect that. But the manual says that mm, if you're going to tow something with this truck, uh, you better fill the tank with 91 or better. So there's some sort of mapping going on that saves the engine and the pistons and the timing and the fuels, whatever. Good. I'm glad you're using computers to figure this out. Also, the Maverick comes with plain old street tires. Just plain, all seasons. Good. Not some big honky-tonk tires that will have you eating Dave Ramsey rice and beans to save up for new tires when they wear out. Nope. And forget about manual mode. There is none. Thank you. Although I'm not a fan of dial a gear here. But that may be just me not having the muscle memory to use this fast enough or accurately enough to do a million point turn around a Pennsylvanian alleyway back street that's really meant for horses. Now, does this hood need to be this bulgy? It's a transverse two liter. It doesn't need all this headroom above the engine. There's more empty room in this engine bay than in a bag of lays. But there's very little wind noise as you're driving along. Unlike the Gladiator, the Ford Maverick, for a truck, cuts through the air quite well. 80 miles per hour, not even stressed. This is an ideal truck for a one-car family because the majority of a quad cab truck's use, and I see it all the time in PA, most trucks with four doors are used as family cars. Just passenger hauling and the bed's empty for 75% of the year. So why not have something that gets amazing gas mileage for the occasional time that you have to put something dirty in the bed? Now, let's talk about laws. And in a uh, uh, legal, legal kind of way, let's think like a little litigation lawyer. See down here? That's a cell phone holder. But why is it down there? Everybody wants a, just a factory place to put your phone in the car. But we've noticed that no cell phone holders it really exist in cars, and no manufacturer is going to put a cell phone holder right on the dash where we can see our phones for our maps. Why won't they do that? Because that's encouraging you to use your phone while driving. That's encouraging distracted driving, even though everybody does it. So from a lawyer's perspective, we can't have cell phone holders. But Ford tried to give us something. But let's look at this layout a little bit more. The cell phone holder is on the left, and it doesn't charge your phone. There is a place to charge your phone, 
but it's just a, you know, lie your phone down and you can't really see it, but it'll do wireless charging there, but not wireless charging. Also, the cell phone holder is on the left side of the console. That way, Ford lawyers can say, oh, no, that's not meant for the driver. That's meant for the passenger. See? Their hands are clean. So unless we find some funny way around uh, liability law, we're not going to have factory cell phone holders, and this is the best you're going to get. Slightly unrelated, but other automotive journalists have been curious about the cubby hole on the top part of the dash that doesn't hold your phone. It doesn't really do anything. It's just here next to the MFD, the multifunction display. So why is that there? It's my prediction that Ford is taking a cue from General Motors with the Corvette. The best Corvettes are never introduced the first year. They just sh yeah, I got to censor myself. They just poo-poo out base model Corvettes the first year when everybody gets excited for the new generation, and then they save the ZR1s and everything else for the later years. Keeps the excitement going. So I predict in the following year or the year after that, we will see a new trim level or a new options package for the Maverick that includes a nice wide screen that just so happens to fill the spot where this little cubby hole was. And it's going to work because it's popular. What can you say about a truck that's been so popular since Jump and a truck Ford stopped accepting reservations for? A compact pickup truck with an available hybrid powertrain and a platform shared by the Ford Escape and Bronco Sport. A truck Ford swears isn't named after the compact car of the same name they made themselves in the 1970s. No, it's not named Maverick because it would test well with the 18 to 35s and their active lifestyles and climbing rocks. No, it's named Maverick because it tested well with the 18 to 35s and their active lifestyles climbing rocks and each other. Coincidentally enough, we wrote this review on Thursday, January 7th, 2022. The date Ford stopped taking retail orders for the Maverick for the year. Business fleets and government orders are still on the table, but Joe, what's his mouth with the tin of red man and a dog who only answers to curse words? No dice. The woman who wants 37 miles to the gallon because she's paying out the ass on fuel costs? And that money was supposed to go to fixing the hot water heater before the next nor'easter? Well, she'll have to hope it's in the dealer inventory or on the used car market until reservations are again accepted in a couple months for the 2023 model. But those are long hopes. Although you can get a naturally aspirated hybrid 2.5 liter Duratec, this is the 2 liter forced induction inline 4 turbo making 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. It's a conventional truck in some ways and completely alien in others. There's no manual mode here unless you get the hybrid version with the CVT and, in, and even in that case it's pretend gears. You also have to pay extra for the EcoBoost just to get all-wheel drive. But really, if something is popular, the details don't actually matter. It doesn't matter that this is supposed to be a cheap, low-cost truck. People are paying premium prices just to say they're rolling around in 2022 with something new. It rides the slipstream created by the people who initially wanted it, and the desire spreads like scurvy on a pirate ship. You see, Bert Bowser got a new truck? No, I didn't. How's he doing? Well, he was doing okay, but then he went moth diving on his ex, and now his mouth looks like the Great Barrier Reef. The Maverick can cost as low as $22,000. No way. Head base, no way. Not now. And the average is still a sub-tundra $28,000. Mm. <laughs> what sort of shady stuff has Carvana been doing with these things? A reminder of a time when you could buy a new truck for less than the cost of a picture of a Bored A. Even if you get the all-wheel drive turbo and $10,000 above sticker price, an affordable small truck is the easiest desire to satisfy among the general public. It's what we've been crying for for pretty much the last eight years. This is low-hanging fruit, like jokes about OJ. It's just right there for the taking. Ford recognized that sometimes... The lowest hanging fruit makes the sweetest wine. And so they made an affordable small truck and watched the orders roll quicker than a load dries. And this is a light truck that feels light, as opposed to most trucks that move like a spoon through Aunt Carol's tuna surprise. Speaking of which, never trust a dish named Blank Surprise. 
because the surprise is that it sucks. This truck feels like it would go hand in hand with the rise of the blue collar influencer. People whose down-home simplistic lifestyles have become a brand unto themselves. Time-lapse crafting videos are dope, but if you're going to be a blue-collar influencer in a nice truck, it would make more sense that it's a sub-$30,000 truck, rather than talking about the rising cost of materials from behind the dash of your $70,000 Ram TRX. The Maverick's flex bed system is one of its biggest selling points, but this sounds suspiciously like a Chevy Avalanche. It's meant to be a more sophisticated way to divvy up space in the flatbed, with pre-threaded holes that let you create your own mounts without drilling, and slots that let you create your own dividers so you can consistently change the layout in here. It's got low bed size, very good, and a lift-in height below 30 inches to accommodate people of just about any manageable adult height. It also has two 12-volt outlets, or an optional 110-volt, eight 2x4 pockets, eight bed tie-downs, four threaded bed holds for the aforementioned DIY approach, two optional storage compartments, two pockets measuring 2x6, a multi-position tailgate that can handle 400 pounds in mid-lock, and a tailgate bottle opener. This, along with a QR code that will give you ideas on how to create dividers and racks. It's not really for us, but I could see how that could be incredibly helpful for people, beyond just being asked how to figure out fancy new ways to help a fair weather friend move houses. Trucks are like NFTs. Super popular, yet the people who own them are constantly getting dunked on. Everyone just figures you're a wannabe vet bro, and it encourages truck owners to be on the defensive when talking about their truck, because they're assuming a hostile audience rather than a receptive one. The Maverick is the categorical opposite of Ford's own Raptor. It's the antidote to the stereotype of truck owners. A truck that can truly do everything from home material transport to a family hauler. The non-standard bed size will not accommodate all building material sizes other than wooden pallets. If you're going to build a bro bar out of some pallets, well, there you go. But you can't use this truck for building contracting. Of course, it's not meant to. If you're a builder, I don't think this truck is even on your radar. But the truck is good because it challenges you to rethink your preconceived notions of what a truck can be. Because you know what this is? This is a ute. We're doing it again. America is trying to build a ute again. Boom! Buried the lead. That's what a Ford Maverick is. Is it a truck? Not in my eyes. I've been to New Zealand twice. This is a ute. Every now and again, America tries, and we normally think El Camino or Ford Ranchero. So hello, Australia and New Zealand. The Yanks are at it again. You guys know how useful these things are for normal people. And I hope, I hope Ford succeeds. This is a unibody, honestly, car that's also a truck, but it's meant to mostly do car stuff. It's, this, it's stepping into a vehicle and discovering it's something other than what you expected. It's the fake taxi of American domesticity. Ford has found a way to smuggle modernity inside the decaying body of tradition, like Han Solo shoving Skywalker into a space camel. see it coming. Imagine all our luck. Never thought a compact could be such a truck. Smaller than its brethren, part of its appeal is raising the garage doors for the big reveal. Funny the way it comes together, everything working well. Never thought I'd see a frozen hell. 